Hi, I'm Hayley from Not Naughty. Lately, David and I have been having discussions about what we might need in the boat in the case of an emergency, uh, first aid, and today we're lucky enough to have my good friend Prasangi on board, who is an ED doctor. Right. Yeah, so we can start off with, we've just purchased this first aid kit from a boat supply store. And let's take a look and see right. what we have. So, I can see that it's got probably, yeah, the first thing would be if you're not a medical person to have some kind of a first aid manual. Mm -hmm. And um, this is obviously a very brief one, but it may be that, especially if you're going to be somewhere where you haven't got internet and you can't look something up or you can't call me, yes. <laughs> then you might, um, you know, get like a slightly more comprehensive, you know, yeah. um, first aid manual, like St. John's kind of do one, mm. or you could get... Yeah, you could even look online and sort of look up a first aid manual that's specifically for marine things. Because, yeah, that is fairly brief and yeah. only focusing on sort of like major emergencies, yeah. you know. So I think, yeah, but I mean, generally, having been on your yacht for a few days, I think it's you generally go into mm. places where you've got internet so you could look stuff up or call yeah. someone, right? Because um, you sort of need internet for work. and mm. So, yeah, so I think that would be the first thing, getting a really good first aid manual. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and right. or having a friend or someone who you can call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. yes, mm -hmm. so and there's a list. Else? This is like a list of the things that's yeah. Added, that we could so probably take some of these out and have a look at them. Yes, so. yeah, sure. So I can generally see uh, that's a list of the things that's in it, and that kind of looks mainly focused on kind of dressings and things like that. So probably I would say this first aid kit is like. Uh, minor injuries kind of a first yeah. aid kit mm, okay. um, but again I think if you're going to be somewhere really far away you should mm. you know plan for the worst case yeah. scenario and yeah. maybe think about the people that are on board and focus on what's wrong got you know what medical yeah. problems that they've got and what needs they've got yeah um, but we can have a look at this one and yeah so like I think this box it looks like because he showed that to me just before which is mainly around kind of various bandages and yeah. um, you know maybe burns dressings and things like that mm -hmm. so we'll have a look so first of all it's got some um, so saline so I think this would be and I think it says on here for eye and wound irrigation but you know it's not very much is it so it's 60 yeah, mils yeah, so small. if someone got sort of a chemical eye injury mm. we would usually wash them out with like a liter oh <laughs> yeah so because yeah. ideally if it's something like acidic or mm. something quite basic we would wash out wash out until you know that the ph of the eye is yeah. back to their normal so that wouldn't go very far yeah. And so, and I think it's a misconception that people have that, you know, it has to be this kind of sterile in a bottle thing. But if you have clean water, yeah. you know, for any cuts or for the eye, that's yeah. just as good. Okay. So, um, you just obviously, protect, you never sea water because yeah. there's lots of bugs in the sea yeah. or never sort of river water because, again, lots of bugs. But, yeah, so yeah. if you've got sort of filtered tap water, I would use, use that. that to wash your wounds out, wash your okay. burns out, wash your eyes out if you've got yeah. stuff. And copious amounts is the key. Okay. So, right. yeah, so <coughs> maybe mm. useful, but mm. it's not much there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. But then, you know, you can't carry a whole litre. Yeah. It will take up all the room on the boat. Yes. So for eyes, would this be good for... Yeah. Just, yeah, if you've got something in your eye yeah. and you want to wash it out. But I think if you've got chemicals in your eye, you, you should... More. Yeah, so what you could maybe do is, because you're, if you're a little bit worried, is your water clean or not, yeah. you could wash your eyes out with the normal water and then you could do the yeah, last bit yeah. with that, okay. maybe. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. What else have we got? We've got a face shield. Yes. For so, CPR. Yes, yeah, so face shield. Again, I guess if you know your family on the boat, yeah. it's probably, you know, you don't need the face shield. Do you want to take it out? Do you want to look? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. so uh, see it's got quite a small amount piece. So you would basically, you know, first of all, presumably someone on the boat will have some kind of a first aid course. Yes. And then they would know to sort of do the briefs. I see it's got some instructions on it as well. Okay. But if it's your family that's on board, then... You know, you're probably not mm. going to worry too much about getting their goobies on you. Yeah. But sometimes <laughs> when you do give people, like... unconscious people, briefs, they mm. do warm it back up. So. Oh. Yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
sort of talk about these seawater, I'm guessing. Yes, yes. Water, so, yeah, so maybe handy. Yeah, yes. definitely. But if it's just your family, I think, you know, that yeah, it might not be necessary. It. But that's what that's for. Oh, handy that it's got the instructions on. It so. does. But, I mean, really, though, mm. in an emergency, you're probably not going to be able to. So it'd be good to yeah. familiarise yourself. And it's, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's a CPR shield just for the breads, which, yeah. you know, if it's your family, you're not going to worry and you're just going to give them new breads mouth to mouth anyway. Yeah. But if it's a stranger, yeah, it's good to kind of prevent infection of mm. things by using one of those. Okay. What else do we have? We have absorbent combine dressings. Yeah, so they're kind of for, probably for bleeding wounds. Yeah. Um, so, because they're Pretty absorbent. Sure. Yeah. So. Okay. If you've got a bad cut that's bleeding lots, it's yeah. the key is to kind of put your hands in the air with that. Maybe gloves if you, you know, not someone that you want to um, get. <laughs> Share fluids with. <laughs> yes, good idea. So you would, yeah, use um, those yeah. absorbent dressings for kind of bleeding wounds. And yeah. the key is to get right into where they're bleeding from. Okay. And then um, so in the pressing wound. really, yeah, oh, really hard. Okay. Yeah. So, because okay. sometimes people like wrap bandages and then put mm. that on the top, and then you, one you don't know what's happening, yeah. and you're not getting direct pressure on the wound. So, yes. yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Let's hope we don't need that. No. <laughs> let's hope we don't need any of those. <laughs> no. Actually, maybe the eye injury is common, but minor, so it should be yes. okay. <laughs> if I was going to wish for one. Yeah. <laughs> we had to pick and choose. Um. Okay. So this one, this one was quite interesting because we just had a quick glance at this before. And this is a bandage, mm -hmm. but it also has an expiry date. Yes. So, and it has expired. Even though <laughs> you just recently we just, it. just bought it a week ago. But does this expiry date matter on a bandage? Um, it's hard to know. I guess the manufacturers kind of come up with that. Um, yeah. I would say a little bit after it would be okay, but potentially mm. maybe they disintegrate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... You know, and you might not want to get that on your wound, but I would think that you know this is only just literally a month yeah. over. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? It's a bit like yogurt that goes off. Does it go off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a bit tricky, but yeah, I think you know obviously you would have to listen to the manufacturer, and it may not work as you want, and you wouldn't want it to disintegrate yeah. in your wound because mm. it would leave bits in it. So yes, okay. yeah, that's just a bandage that yeah, yeah. we'll have. Multi-purpose thing yes, again. Got a few pressure. more. Yeah. A few more different sizes. Yeah. So it's something like that you could even use on like an ankle sprain or mm. a, you know any other kind of sprains. Yeah. So if a sprain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. Again, you can you know put put your absorbent dressing once you've got good control. You can put one of those on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Increased. And um normal plasters. Normal plasters. Everybody knows. Everyone knows how to use those. Um, and then just some extra tapes, I guess. So yeah, tape and they'd be sort of, so maybe you might, adhesive, so it's, um, again, strains, strains mm. kind of tape. And then I guess you could keep your dressings on using that kind of tape because it's not too sticky, so it won't hurt too much when you sort of take it off and things. So you yeah. could use that kind of tape. Maybe you sprain your finger, you want to get too short to see if you've broken mm. it or whatever, until then you could sort of strap your two fingers together with a thin tape like that. Okay. Um, so you could use that for that. Okay. So, what yes. else have we got in yeah. here? <laughs> oh, we've got a foil blanket. Oh, yes. What do you think it's for? Hypothermia? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, how big is it is the key. Uh, and so, oh, 1.3 yeah. by 2.1 meters. Yeah, so I think the key probably with hypothermia is getting someone really dry yeah. and then sort of, yeah, you can, you know, use the blankets or whatever you've mm. got at home. And is there a trick to using these foil blankets? Do you just cover somebody or do you need to wrap them? Um, so dry them first yeah. and then you wrap them. But you can use, I mean, you've got lots of other things in the yeah. house. So you could, I mean, in the house, I mean, in the <laughs> boat, yeah. so that you could also use really. Mm. So, but say you'd gone out tramping or something and yeah. you'd taken your first aid kit, then you might yes. be using that instead because okay, it will kind of yeah. keep you dry as well. Yes. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. And I think we've just got one of the near one. There's a triangular bandage. Yeah. Oh, so that's, that's a sling. Okay. Do you want to try putting a sling on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. I have had two children with broken arms. So oh, I'm have you? trying to remember. <laughs> oh, so interestingly, it doesn't come with the safety pin. No instructions, oh, oh, is it? For a safety pin. All right, no. I'm going to let you put it on oh, me. Oh, I... <laughs> and then I... Oh, gosh. 
So, um, this way? Have I got you? Did I trick you? This way? <laughs> I think it's this way. Is it really me? <laughs> Do I go like, um, this so, way? Yeah, I think, so if maybe it was you, Mackie or, mm, okay. um, you know, little people, then you might use that, like, folded over, but okay. probably for an adult. I am small oh, adult, big, but yeah. use a big one. So okay. the pointy end to the pointy elbow. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> so the pointy end to the pointy elbow. Yeah. And up then, around, tight yeah, around the neck. Yeah, you did good. And then safety pins. Yeah, fold usually like most um, slings come with a the instructions. couple of safety pins, so you put a safety pin there. So what would we do we otherwise? Just fold it? Yeah, you could tie fold. it up, oh, I guess. You could tie, tie it up. Yeah. And then you tie it up up here anyway, so. Okay. Yeah. So point, so there's the your point. Pointy, to, pointy okay, to, so the pointy to the elbow. Yeah, and then you kind of bring it around. Yeah, okay. the side. That's right. your sling. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And we have up just some more dressing bandages or dressing pads. Yeah, so those are different to the absorbent ones. Okay. So these, these are non-adherent but absorbent. So they might they will be for burns. Because okay. imagine if you lost mm. the top layer of your skin. Yes, you if you put much. like something that kind of sticks on to oh. that that's gonna be not very pleasant to take yeah. it off. So yeah, so you these are non-adherent dressing. The alternative thing, if you don't have a non-adherent dressing, mm -hmm. is to just use your normal dressing and you might put your saline from here. And then, you know, again, oh, this okay, is a temporary yeah. measure till you yes. get to a doctor, I guess, yeah. or a nurse or whatever. So you, you can put the saline on that, you can put that on there, yeah. and then that will stop it from sticking to yeah. the, you know, to the skin. So or clothes, because often you see burns and clothes. Yeah. On and well, with burns, I think the key, first you should ask, first they then take the clothes off yeah. and then you wash it out then in 20 you minutes is that 20 minutes 20 minutes yeah water. 20 minutes and it's running water because often okay, people yeah. might just get a wet blanket or something and put it on mm. but if you've got clean running water that is much better okay yeah and then with burns also if you've got large burns you could even put people in a shower but then you've got to be yeah. careful that you don't give them hypothermia so oh gosh yes. yeah so it's very yeah. tricky but yeah clean running water for 20 minutes then you put a non-adherent absorbent dressing if they're really bad and blistered and things yeah. then um, you can you know wrap people up in cling film as well yes if you've got okay. even if just a normal gland wrap out. yeah because okay. often what hurts is the drying air kind of coming on a burn mm -hmm. so again if you've got lots of blisters you should go and see someone yeah get some good dressings if you've got burns on your hands if you've got burns on your feet burns mm -hmm. on your genitals your face yeah. you know much more serious so you should go and see someone anything blistered as, yeah. as well so and with the, yeah with so the, you put those dressings and those that. will go on yeah. and also there's often a lack of water <laughs> right <laughs> on boats so if you were yeah, on a smaller yeah. boat and you didn't have a lot of running water yeah um you had a water bottle you could keep pouring it yeah into yeah a bucket and then re doesn't exactly have be, doesn't have to be fresh just has to be running. Yes, just has to be running. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think if you didn't have running, then you would use like a cold, wet cloth. And I think yeah. there may be like a gelinex or something like that in here for after about 20 minutes of cooling, you know, and then you put those and things those on. Things. Okay, yeah. and maybe the saline. This is just an iPad and then just oh, yeah. some small, yeah. woven, smaller size. I think, yeah, we sort of don't use iPads that much anymore, but yeah. I guess if someone has you know got something in the eye and again you washed it out lots yeah they still saw or they got a cup on the eye you might use that but we yeah. hardly use hardly those use anymore so a little bit redundant yeah, yeah. 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 Those are just and the kids ask for the eye yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right so yeah non-woven swabs so mm. just more stuff to absorb bleeding wounds and things yeah. i think those okay. yeah and that's the this is the instant cold compress the oh, instant yeah. ice pack yeah yeah so we have an ice pack in the freezer anyway. Yeah, sure. This is, I'm guessing has one of those little clicky yeah, things inside. Cat catalyst and kind of thing in it. Yes. Oh, squeeze, squeeze, shake, and apply. Yeah. That's a cooling pack. So. Yeah. So yeah, that could be various things: strains, mm -hmm. brains. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. So it is kind of a. It pack. seems like quite yeah. a, a basic <laughs> first aid kit, doesn't it? For small, but it's not. Yeah, these are all good things. Oh yeah, burn gels. The, there's okay. The gel, so there's a couple of those. Yeah, so I think you know lots of people do put various creams and things on burns, but yeah. I think you know just for 
scolds where like your skin just goes red that might be useful but I think for us especially if people have bad burns where the skin's mm. blistered and the yeah. epidermis or the top layer of skin's come off it would be better for you not to put stuff on it yeah. um, because it's the main worry with deeper burns are risk of infection yeah. so okay. just those ones you would just put a glad wrap and come in but yes. a red scold where you don't skin's not broken yeah. You might just use, just use this, this kind of things, and you probably won't need to come and see anyone yeah. if it's just yeah. just read. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have we've got paracetamol. That, that's self-explanatory, I yes, suppose. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what these are. What yeah. Are they? So the gelinet, it's called. It's a type of dressing. Again, you can use them on birds. It's a little bit sort of like wet. Oh, okay. um, kind of dressing. So yeah, I mean it's a very small bit. So if you again had listed kind of burn skin you can put it on okay. or you have like a you know bad cut or something mm -hmm. and you sort of it's not bleeding anymore you could again it's like a non-adherent but yeah. generally used for burns those okay. are yeah oh, okay yeah That's cleansing wipes cleansing wipes yeah yes. explanatory uh Gauze bandage, gauze bandages. Gauze. Yeah, it's a medical gloves. <laughs> More, <laughs> medical gloves are are yeah. More medical gloves, are they? More medical gloves. We've got three yeah, pairs yeah. of those in this kit. We've got some. Oh, oh there is some safety pins in there. Three oh, there is. Bandage. Oh, safety pins. Here we go. Yeah. And some scissors, some unusual shaped scissors. Oh, yeah, they, so they can be used for, they're a bit like we have something called trauma scissors, where, oh, yeah. you know, someone comes in in a bad emergency and then you want to cut their clothes and it's got this kind of oh, okay. bit here so you won't kind of it's not sharp into them so in an emergency you can sort of cut clothes yeah. off or whatever so if you could put a wetsuit yeah tight. yeah that's right so you you know it's got a end that's not pointy so that that can be against the body and then yeah you okay. can cut clothes and things off yeah, yeah. oh good okay yeah uh here we have a notebook and pen um yeah but it's just record injuries. Yeah, if you had to say like injury. lots of people around that can help you, then yeah. someone could be sitting there writing down that, you know, at this time you called for help, at this time you were doing, you know, yeah. um, CPL or whatever, yeah. you know, so you, someone could be writing things mm. down, I guess, yeah. Yes, and we've got a fabric dressing strip here. Oh, uh, yeah, just kind of like a bigger breathable plaster really, so no, yeah, one. They yeah. some tweezers. Yeah. Some pointy yeah. weird the splinters. <laughs> splinters and things out. Yeah, I think that's yeah. that's about it. It's a plastic bag. Yeah. So that's that's everything in the kit. Yeah. So there's probably a few gaps. <laughs> yeah, there's a few gaps, yeah. but I think it's like I think it's basically yeah. for minor injuries yes. this first aid kit. Yes. And then just kind of got that face mask. Yeah, and a little bit of irrigation stuff, but yeah. you know, it would cover a few mm. minor yeah, things that happen on a yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a few things that happen on a boat. I think. Yes, yeah, yes, because we can't always bring the doctor with us. <laughs> 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 so, um, okay, so a few other things that could happen on a boat. So, mm. what you probably had people come in after fishing trips and yeah, have yeah. had injuries. Yeah, this. Um, probably, yeah, I was telling Hayley that maybe, you know, probably fish hook injuries are yeah. a really common thing that we see, mm -hmm. which I think won't happen on your boat, because no, no, we, don't, <laughs> we don't fish. No, we don't fish <laughs> in a vegan boat. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, but if, it, if what, what, so somebody gets a fish hook through their, through their hand, mm. what would we do? Yeah, so I think, you know, first of all, it depends where it is, but mm. what we do these yeah. days, actually, so we used to, it depends if they've got the sort of three prongs or one prong, but um, you just definitely, you can't pull it out. You yeah. know, because it's got the barb in it. I think everybody, okay, cool. the people who go fishing probably know that. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we do various tricks really. So, one would be just kind of put some local anaesthetic around mm -hmm. where it is, and then you yeah. could take it out from another hole. Then you might cut the tip off, mm -hmm. and then. Um, but you know, this wouldn't be just something that people do on their own no. because when you make another hole, you might go through something yes. bad. Um, but you know, if you were really, really far away, like, mm. and you just couldn't get to someone, there is something called a string technique where you can probably has to demonstrate really, but yes. um, you can YouTube tie a string. It. Yeah, you can YouTube <laughs> it, tie a string on one end, and then you push down to disengage the barb as you pull yeah. the string. But you should wear your sort of eyeglasses and things. 
Um, and that's something they'll be commonly used yeah. if it's like an area quite far away from the rest of the body mm. and say like a foot or a leg or you know yeah. um, arms because you don't need to put anesthetic in and yeah. that could be something that people could do if they just can't get to a doctor yeah okay. um, but yeah so but yeah it, it requires a bit of training and yeah. techniques so, so best to yeah. the doctor yeah it's best to just have the doctor <laughs> <laughs> so something we've got around here or that we see often is stingrays. So yeah. if the kids are playing and they stepped on a stingray and got yeah, spiked yeah. with the barb, yes. what do we do? Yeah, so we haven't seen stingrays until about recently probably mm. in New Zealand, stingray injuries. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, in the summer it is becoming more common mm. in Nelson especially. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, often obviously it's not like kind of dramatic like Steve Urban kind yeah. of. It's often, you know, someone <laughs> yeah. might step on one so yeah. or would be sort of on their legs as they're walking mm. through shallow water and accidentally got. So they can be very, very painful yes. um, and so it can sometimes make people feel nauseous mm. as well. Um, but generally really painful. So it's got sort of, um, mostly it's cartilaginous and it's got little spines on it. Mm. Um, so sometimes you might not see the little spines on an x-ray. So mm. um, if also the spines come off and your skin. Yeah, they oh. can do. Wow. So And then also they kind of, I think it's not well understood, but sort of like maybe release some kind of a toxin type thing. So oh. you get this terrible pain. So mm. um, putting lots of really warm water, as okay. hot as you can get, yes. without burning someone's yes. skin is mm. the key when you've got a stingray. And is there a of time you need to do this? Yeah, for? so I think it's sort of maybe half an hour or something. Oh, until, wow. Okay. Yeah, but then, you know, even if even if you sort of, it's best not to pull it out because you might cause more damage or yes. it might be sort of tamponading like a blood vessel or something. So you don't want to pull it out and find you bleed lots. Oh, so does the whole bag come off? It's sometimes, oh, sometimes, wow. yeah, yeah, it just leaves a little spine. Yeah. Sometimes the barb kind of remains and say if it went yeah. in like a big muscly like oh, your yeah. calf or something mm. I have seen that so yeah. um, it sort of stays there so it, but it's very very painful so you put lots yes. of hot water as hot as you can get yeah. and then you sort of get them to someone because you know it wouldn't be something that like your GP so. would wash out you'd be yeah. you know you sort of sometimes you have to take them to the theatre and wash it out and make sure you get all the little spines and then the people need antibiotics and things as well yeah, yeah. And so but if you just got a very minor it. kind of a cut you just mm. wash it out and you know if there's you know very superficial wound you can yeah. just wash it out and leave it but not in sea water washing with fresh water fresh water and hot water <laughs> and what else have we come across jellyfish um, yeah yeah so yeah we don't have water. terrible things like australia no. but, um, <laughs> thank goodness yeah like Blue bottle, mm. you know, is yeah. the hot water. one. Yeah, yeah, again, hot okay. water. So we don't need to pee on any of the jellyfish <laughs> in New Zealand. We might do say that to a mean friend, but, uh, <laughs> but it's not necessary. No. So. It's not. <laughs> um, okay, so something else that could happen. Okay, changing during the engine room and you get electrocuted. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think um, you know. So if it's like normal household electric, like which it volts, is, yeah. yeah. Um, then if you survived it, then you are fine. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, so, uh, you did use to do an ECG and all this sort of stuff, but, mm. you know, if you were worried, you know, go and see someone, but generally normal household voltage, you are, you know, you are okay. So yeah. either something terrible would happen or... Or you're fine. Yeah, or you're fine. Yeah. yeah. So okay. generally you're okay. Okay, yeah. and, uh, and head injury, something, falling yeah. off the... Falling out, slipping and falling and end, ending up in the transom. Oh, right. Yeah, it's getting really... Yeah. We started with mine. We started with really mine. No. It's getting worse and worse. So, yeah, so, yeah, I guess, yeah, again, you know, it'd be a, a bit of a call, isn't it? Do I go back, yes. you know, or do I stay here? I suppose that's more who can drive the boat, isn't it? That's yes. more of a problem for the rest of us, is yes. how do we get back and right. get somewhere. Yeah, so um, I think it will be like, you know how bad, how mm. dangerous was the thing that happened? Like, yeah. did they fall three metres or did they just slip on the deck? Yeah. You know, um, so that would be probably the first thing. And then what are they like after? So mm. can they remember from before? Have they forgotten things? Okay. And people often might have trouble forming new memories after, but you should remember everything leading up to the event. Yes. So have they got a big egg on their head? Are they vomiting? So. Yeah. If it was like a terrible mechanism, like they've fallen off three meters, they're vomiting, they're not their usual self, then you know it's an emergency and you should try and 
for one one one. Yeah. Yeah. But if if they just kind of flipped on the dig, mm. sort of tiny cut, they remember everything that happened, they're acting their usual self, not sick, not vomiting, not got mm. a bad headache, we would be okay. Okay, well oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. What are the other things? There's I suppose there's anything that could happen at home, isn't there? Heart attack and the stroke yeah, and sure. all of these. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, preparing mm. for the worst is probably yeah. the best. Yeah. And you're not going to jinx things, so yes. yeah, maybe someone on the boat you should say that maybe doing mm. a first aid course, so maybe yeah, doing a first aid course, yeah, um, having yeah. a first aid manual for mm. those, and then you know, having some kind of systems of mm. you know how you call for help and how you access help if you're somewhere remote, so um, would be the main thing. So there's also like an app, um, on my phone, but I can show you. Which I've got on my phone. Uh, it's a free app in New Zealand where all the AEDs in New Zealand are on this map. So oh, the well. automatic defibrillator. So yes. you might, in fact, when we came, I did have a look oh, yes. to see. So there was, the yeah, ones. there was one. There was several around. So oh, there's one good. at Portage. I think there's one at um, like some community right. halls, and then people's private ones are on it as well. Yeah, oh, so useful. You, yeah, yeah, so you could like if you're close to land and you're yeah. close to one of those, then. While you wait for help, you could send someone to go and hmm. get an AED. So yeah. maybe downloading one of those apps yeah, to see okay. where the defibrillators are. So in an adult collapse, that would be, you know, yeah. sort of the it's time to getting a defibrillator is mm. important for survival. So, and yeah. Obviously, the people that have them know how to use them. So getting someone. Yeah. Well, they're very self-explanatory because they're made okay. for anyone yes. uh, who's perhaps done a first aid course or whatever yeah. to be able to... Um, you know, be able to use it. So, yes. and they'll have like, you know, one, two, three, attach your leaves, attach, you know, your yes. pads. Oh, great. So, so yeah, and it, it'll t tell you, it'll prompt you, say, you know, do CPR, stop CPR, yeah. assess rhythm, whatever. Yes. You know, oh, you're going to shock, press the shock button. There's only, it's very, yeah. most of them are very easy to use for yeah. any stranger. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I suppose we're around water all the time, just it's drowning, I guess, isn't it? Somebody slips over. Yes. That's yeah. yeah, so I think again, you know, drowning is a breathing problem mm. and then also the cold problem. So if they're kind of breathing and talking, yeah. then they're fine and um, mm. you just want to warm them up and, you know, yeah. get them out. And uh, if they've got breathing, breathing difficulties, then go and see someone. Yeah. Um, sometimes there is some delayed things after drowning. You might get like a chest infection called okay. aspiration. With it will go down the wrong way, or sometimes your lungs can fill up with fluid after. So, if it was a really bad one, you know, they're having trouble breathing and things again, it would be good to go and see someone. Yeah, because it's yeah. one of the delayed things, but yeah, yeah. So, again, giving people some breaths, mm. um, putting them in the recovery position once they start breathing, keeping yeah. them nice and warm, yeah, and yeah, certainly for help early, yeah, yeah. And big wounds, we've already gone through. Yeah. Bitten by a shark. Bitten by a shark. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. I can't say I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite if uncommon. you live to tell it, <laughs> yes. then you're pretty lucky. Yeah. But um, again, it will be like any other wound mm -hmm. washing the wound, yeah. compression, compression yeah. to control the bleeding, mm -hmm. and then go to see someone because you yeah. probably need antibiotics and some definitive wound management so yeah. ideally if you have a really bad wound that needs stitching yeah. um, you know you should try and get to see someone within six hours or so because risk yeah. of infection things go up mm. that might not always be possible I guess but yeah, yeah. so within six hours is that's when you kind of especially yeah. if you've got like a facial wound or something because you okay. don't want it getting infected yeah yeah okay are there any things that you think we should add to this first aid kit? Right. Um, that could well, help in yeah. some of those situations. Right. What could you add? Um, I don't know if you could buy like a bag of, you know, saline or water for irrigation. Mm. Maybe you could have okay, that in yeah. there. Um, you could, um, what else, what other things could we talk about? Um, I think, you know, a really good bandage, to be honest. I think almost mm. lots of the other stuff is fairly redundant. Yeah. A really good bandage that would control bleeding, you could put on a wound, mm. is all you need. You probably don't need a lot of the fancy stuff actually, yeah. so keep it simple. Okay. Is probably what I would say. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I don't think there's any, is there anything else we thought of earlier? <laughs>
<laughs> what was Alex talking about earlier? And I said, oh, yes, that's a good point. What was that? No, in the kitchen, what did he say? <laughs> there was something he said, I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, we did, talked about stingrays, we talked about blue bottle, we talked yeah. about well, drowning, about injuries, yeah. burns. burns. And then, I think the rest is yeah, directing at the people. At so the people. someone has an so, allergy or a, yeah, yeah, someone has an allergy, then you yeah, would sure, yeah. carry adrenaline, you know, maybe yeah. not just an EpiPen, you might ask your doctor if you could have some vials of adrenaline. Okay. Um, and then unfortunately they only last about three months or so because mm. they're very light sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose also to check the expiry on um, everything you've got in your first yeah, aid kit. But you know, I think, you know, like dressings generally mm. should be fairly yeah. okay um, unless they're like 10 years old and they're sort of disintegrating. Yeah. Other than that, I think, you know, I wouldn't worry too much that it expired a month ago. But yeah. medications are different, I think, you know, especially yeah. intravenous medications mm. that they might not be yet. Active, yeah. but um, you know, but kind of normal things, and then maybe having some pain relief, yeah, anti nausea stuff, probably. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's probably the commonest thing, isn't it? Sea sickness, yeah. so having yeah. anti nausea tablets, yeah. um, and you could maybe ask your GP to prescribe some because we might get like a like normal people could get mm. a stomach bug on the boat, yeah, on mm. top of you know, having seasickness and you could get really dehydrated, so having yeah. some anti nausea tablets. So, there's ones, there's one that you can actually give children as well. Okay. Um, so you could, you know, use that one on the boat and then just have that for the adults and the kids. Okay. And then, you know, you could use that if they start throwing up lots or having lots of diarrhea or something mm. and they're getting really dehydrated. Mm. Maybe you don't, again, you don't have to have fancy electrolyte drinks. You can dilute juice. You could have some ice pops. Ice yeah. pops are a good way to rehydrate. Okay. So dilute the one part juice to four parts water. Um, mm. that's the same as like an electrolyte drink that oh. you can hydrate children with so yeah. um, or having yeah paddle pops you know those ice pop kind of things to rehydrate yeah, yeah and to use your stuff probably yeah, yeah. okay yeah great Oh, well, thank you, Prasangi. That's yes, cool. No problem. I'll pack all this up and I'll write down anti nausea medication on my list. <laughs> and probably. Yeah, some more pain relief, maybe yeah. some ibuprofen. Yes, because we've yeah. got paracetamol here, haven't we? Yeah, a bit of yeah. ibuprofen. So, yeah. yeah, giving some, you know, people might get a headache or something. So, yeah. well, that happens yeah. often, doesn't it? Especially yeah. when you're out on the in water the all day in yeah. the sun. And sunburns, to drink I guess, and, yeah. Yeah, sunburns, aloe vera gel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Really? You did most of the talking. That's what I don't know. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm nervous. Oh yeah, it's 34 minutes. Yeah, so David said it would be about half an hour. Okay, but he's fine. probably going, oh, that's probably just going to run it. I'll just stick this triangular bandage back in its... Yeah, I, I, there was something that Alex was talking about. What was she talking about? I can't remember. I'm going to say that's so interesting. Yeah. But <laughs> I do think, Hayley, you should get a proper first aid book. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's a bit crap. Because sometimes when you're And maybe you should do, if you're worried about all yeah. this stuff, maybe you should do a first aid mm. course. I guess I, you know, it's sort of a bit glasé for me. Yeah. But, you know, if you sort yeah. of. But, I don't know. Anyway. Yes. Well, but, a lot of the stuff you really just need to get to a. You know, it's just, I know. It's just looking yeah, after so, so you can yeah, like so there's like the algorithms in an emergency, so it's yeah. your safety first. Yeah. Then it's you know, are you people are they responding? And then the next thing would be so it's called Doctors A B C Danger okay. Response say, yeah, Send for Help. Okay. And then A B C so airway breathing circulation. Okay. So yeah, so well, that's a good thing. To yeah. Remember. Doctors A B C. So danger, mm -hmm. like is the electrical wires around? Yeah. Am I gonna be eaten by the shark as well? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then, you know, are they responsive? Oh no, they're unconscious mm -hmm. and then you send for help immediately. So yeah, you know, go and tell someone to call one one one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And 111 is who we call for anything in, in New Zealand. That's right. It's not 911. No, it's 111. <laughs> and then a helicopter hopefully will come. A helicopter hopefully will come and rinse you out. Yes. <laughs> oh, if it's good weather. Right, this doesn't happen. We no. don't need any of these. No. Oh, you forgot to. Oh, gosh. Okay. So, oh, I don't know how I'm going to shut this. I have to repack it. But It'd be fine. Yeah, I'll tell do you want to do like Jack in the box when you open it in the emergency. <laughs> Someone gets an eye injury from it. <laughs> Scissors and safety pins. I think a needle would be good because of the splinters. Well, you've got the tweezers, though. That's true, little yeah. pointy tweezers. Okay, so.
Yeah, I don't know. I'll probably think of something later. I know, you need but it. Damn but, <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, the thing is, it's really. I think just having a really good bandage. Yeah. For bleeding. bleeding. And then, I mean, all the other stuff is minor stuff, like mm. plasters and whatever. But you will make do with something else, mm. like a sling you can make out of, like a towel or yeah. something. You can make a splint out of some cardboard. Yeah. You know, you can buy various fancy splints and things, but just roll up some newspaper if someone breaks mm. their arm and then just make a fake splint, you yeah, know, so to move it to someone. Yeah, yeah so I don't So what about, um, would wound glue or those, and, you know, those plastic... Sturdy strips. Yeah. yeah, I guess that's a temporary measure. Yeah. And if you were unsure, like if it's like a bad cut or not, and you're gonna have to go and see someone, then you don't know. Yeah. Is there fairly minor, even just a normal class and a piece and yeah. keep things together? Okay. Yeah. Where would you use sturdy strips? So if, it, if it's deep, and that's just before you get somewhere, is there? Yeah. So it's just yeah. So of kind of t uh, size really. Yeah. One, how gapy something is. Is it? somewhere where it's over a joint where it's oh. going to keep splitting open so yeah. sometimes even we find it hard to decide what to glue and what to stitch yeah um there's a real overlap like yeah. so you know if it's like fairly small less than kind of three centimeters mm. not a massive gaping wound that's yeah. not over like a joint like a you know knuckle or a wrist or whatever yeah then you can generally glue those so okay. but you don't put glue inside you from the mm. outside i'm not sure mm. The, it's available to public to buy. Oh, okay. Um, maybe there might be some, but yeah, they're not like gluing inside the wound. What they're doing is just keeping the top layer together yeah. so that your wound just heals by itself. You're yeah. not actually gluing the insides Inside, together, yeah. you're just gluing the mm. top layer. Yeah. So that, yeah, so, um, yeah, so those would be fairly small, non gaping, not over a place that moves a lot, not yeah. over a place that gets wet a lot. Yeah, okay.